How's it going everybody? Welcome to another Animation Power Tips. This is episode number 7 and the series is sponsored by Autodesk. Thanks as always to Autodesk for sponsoring the series. Uh, the comments that you guys give me are really really helpful to know exactly where to take the series next. And on this episode specifically, I'm going to talk about how do I go from idea to then fleshing out a shot than making my own, right? Because we all are looking after that, especially for your shots on your showreel. So let's talk about that. Also, I cannot forget to mention that if you haven't seen any of the episodes before this one, make sure to go back, check the previous ones, and then come back to this one. Having said all that, let's get started with this episode. The thing that we're actually going to check uh, today is basically uh, this blocking and this is particularly interesting because I actually never got to polish the scene due to my work actually I started working at DICE just as I was working on the scene so this scene as blocking goes it's a very basic blocking that I did lots of popping here and there but it kind of illustrates how far you can go at the point that I stopped it it looks like this So there's more to it, there's actually an intro and an outro, which I'm gonna leave to actually show you guys in the end how it actually looked. But I'm gonna start by actually taking you guys through the journey of this shot, because I think it's very interesting and I think you guys should actually do more of that as you work on your shots. Because this kind of scene is actually kind of a showcase quite a bit about creativity and how you can actually kind of start breaking down your shots so you can explain it to your potential future employers um, that how you actually went about your shot, especially when someone asks you, I like your shot, explain to me how you actually got to this idea, right? Because it will happen at some point when you go to interviews, they'll be like, you know what, this shot is really interesting, so explain to me how you got to it. And if you just go and say, well, you know, I had the idea and I executed it and this is the final shot, it kind of feels like you didn't really thought about it long enough. And that's not good enough, especially for someone that is trying to hire you. So for you to actually kind of go through step by step and have files and videos to showcase that really helps you to sell your shot. So I'm going to show you guys how I started and what sparked this shots in particular. So the first thing I saw as, as I was perusing YouTube, I found this shot of Ronaldinho uh, doing a keepy uppy and it was just like five seconds. But that was enough for me to just go into like, wow, this looks amazing. So I'm just gonna play it out so you guys can see um, how everything started. That's it. That is actually what sparked the whole thing. So I saw this. And after I saw this, I was like, this is amazing. I'm really digging it and I really need to do an animation about it. So I actually went from this to then going into like, how can I actually make this a full animation shot? Because this five seconds is not really an animation, right? I mean, it looks great what he does, but this by itself is not really a shot per se. If you actually were to play this in a showreel, it would feel like a blur because it's five seconds and then it goes through. So you could do it potentially, but ideally you want to flesh it out a bit more, tell a story with your shot, make sure that things look a bit better than they are right here, right? So it has a start, a middle and end. And this, because it's the meat of the shot, should be the middle of the shot. And then before that, you should have a start and after that, you should have an end. So after actually going through it, I actually started thinking, how can I actually kind of embellish this shot? While I was thinking about what should I do before and after, I actually went ahead and started thinking about what the Ronaldinho was doing and out of the whole movement that he was doing, right? What were my like, goal poses? Uh, what kind of things that I had to do in order to push the animation further, to make it more entertaining, to make it better, all that stuff, right? So this is basically what I came up with. It was basically like, like me kind of sketching out the main poses that actually sell the movement of the animation. And if you pay attention, as you actually kind of a go, go through here, um, I actually make notes about like that this for example this drawing here has two frame repeat right here there's two frames that actually repeat themselves 
um, and that's very interesting because I can actually kind of uh, make sure that the animation sells a little bit better by actually make sure that on that like apex of the ball there's a little stop and then the animation continues so it helps me break down the animation a little bit better as I go through it I have another note there to frame repeat and then fast slow on the turn that's another note here so basically this movement here on the on the fast turn if I could actually make it faster to make sure that it looks a bit more entertaining I did this a little bit I actually went ahead and did it further just to clarify in my mind what exactly did I wanted to do and how did I wanted to do it by the end of this when I got to the end of like just catching these things and getting to the t to the bottom of what I wanted to do exactly I felt like I, I knew what I wanted to do but instead of actually doodling I had to get reference of myself doing that intro and that outro and whatever actually felt good in the middle in order to flesh out the shot a little bit better so I went outside of creative assembly like the studio that I used to work at the time with a mate Elliot is right now a lead animator at Creative Assembly and he helped me actually shoot, shoot this stuff on a break time and, and also helped me to kind of like tell me as a fellow animator that he was and he's a really good animator if these shots were good enough or did I have to push uh, my body a little bit more, did it felt uh, authentic enough, all of that stuff because I'm not a footballer and obviously I want to make sure that this kind of flows well. So what I've done next was basically going outside of Creative Assembly on my break time when I had a break just to make sure that I could actually capture how, how would an intro to this shot would look. So I basically set my camera and I thought I'm gonna start from behind the camera and then come into the shot and then receive the ball just like he does. Receive the ball and then go into the keepy uppy. So the reference that I shot looked a little bit like this just for the intro. So notice how I actually kind of add the intro and also add the 2D doodling that I did in order to see how it flows in my mind at least. Um, things, do they actually look like they belong to each other? See, so I'm actually jumping here, I'm actually going to my editor, jumping here and then receiving the ball. You can see my last pose there as I'm jumping. I'm jumping a little higher than he does right there and then it kind of transitions into this. So I know I have to do some work there in animation to make sure that the two things flow together. And then what I did as well is to find out how would you actually come out of this move? Because he spins, as you see in the original clip, he spins and then the clip cuts. So how would that movement continue after that? Like that. So I had to make sure that I basically kind of twisted myself quite a bit in order to get that movement right so I was actually like standing like this and then and then eventually I went off and did my my turns like that and then I quite liked the fact that I actually jumped here um, and that wasn't expected it's just my body just doing whatever felt good and then it kind of just jumped and jumped and then continued so that felt quite good right so good I felt like I have something here and I'm thinking at this point, do I actually have enough to flesh out a shot? Does this look entertaining enough? Once again, showed it to my colleagues, showed it to Elliot, showed it to people. And uh, they thought it was cool, but I didn't get that like, wow, this is amazing, right? So something was missing at this point. So I go in to that reference that I showed you guys, and I start actually kind of a drawing over myself to find out, once again, the main poses, the golden poses, what kind of poses can I push, what can I do with my animation that, cannot, that I cannot do with my body that will make this shot much more appealing. So you can see here that I'm actually kind of sketching just the main poses, the ones that actually will give me the animation as I go through, trying to actually get some, some notes. So I have a contact pose here, this foot needs to be off the floor as I go through it. Um, both feet are on the floor at this point, actually both feet are off the floor at this point then you jump you stretch your, le your legs make sure that you actually get a little stretch on it in order for if the rig can accommodate it uh, tiptoes jump get the ball and go into it right so I already have my notes here I know what to do and then I go into the second the second bit so here I'm actually kind of getting this pose as you can see here the end of this of this uh, clip where Ronaldinho is doing it 
it's pretty much the beginning of, of this one, right? So here I'm deciding, do I go with my pose or do I go with Ronaldinho's pose? To be decided. Either way, we'll continue. Make sure that you actually kind of uh, mark the hands as you go through and you're still kind of uh, doing like every two or three frames, you're actually making sure that you're actually like just delineating the poses that you actually want to hit as you do the animation. Okay, so that's done. I'm kind of feeling confident and I'm kind of feeling maybe should I jump into Maya or should I actually flesh it out a bit more? So at this point, um, I'm starting to feel like that my animation is no longer enough <laughs> and this shot might actually not have an ending because that me jumping and walking away, I could just walk away off the frame again and that will be it. But because I'm feeling it at this point, I'm thinking it needs to have a little bit of something else in order to really sell the shot and really kind of make a sync. So you already know about the, sh the, the notes here. So at this point, I actually kind of, uh, a few weeks go past and I'm racking my brain about what I need to do. So I actually go into one of the offices like after work and start thinking, okay, what happens after here, after he actually kind of finishes and then walks off? Does he walk off the frame? How does he actually do it? So I go with another mate, David Vince, shout out to him uh, from work. And we actually, we were actually going to an office and then basically I try a few things to see what works. And out of all the things that I tried, this is what worked best. So I'm thinking pretty smug. Uh, the guy is pretty smug. So does this work? Maybe, maybe not. I'm not too sure just yet. I'm thinking that maybe the character of this footballer, of this guy, is pretty smug because he can do all these things, right? So he probably is feeling himself. So I'm, I'm kind of going, yeah, it's fine. I mean, I can see David is laughing at me because of the moves that I'm doing and I'm acting super smug. So I'm thinking maybe this is good enough. At this point in time, I'm actually trying it out in Maya and I'm kind of not, not feeling that ending anymore. And because I'm not feeling that ending anymore, I go back into an office with Dave and we try a few more things to actually find out what works best. And I actually tried this and this is the stuff that kind of goes, I kind of feel this. So uh, this is kind of what we come up with. He brushes his foot and then it goes off. And I like this idea much better because um, he is actually interacting with the ball with his foot. It's much more indicative of what just happened before where he's actually doing the KPLP and then shooting the ball and all that stuff. So I'm like, cool. And then he walks off, just like I mentioned before, which is an idea that I had from the very beginning. Okay, cool. So now that we have that, I need to actually do the same pass as I did on all the previous passes of going through and start kind of uh, annotating th some things, finding out the main poses that will tell the story and where can I push things going forward in my mind with this animation to make it the most entertaining possible. So I actually go in every two or three frames, I, I actually do my notes, right? So tap, tap, lift, that was something that I really wanted to get. I don't see my hand very much here. So I needed to make sure that I actually annotated that to make sure that I do that in my animation. So, and then I think I have another one here. So when he slows the leg down, definitely need to get actually that, that there. Um, I should have put a note here about actually making sure that you kind of slightly break the joint to get a better curve on that leg if, if possible. And then the foot is hovering and it's not really touching the floor. That is very important once again, because it kind of looks like he's touching at this point and then he plants the foot and then he kind of goes off, right? So this is what I have so far and I'm liking where I'm going. So at this point, it's just me getting back to Maya and then starting animating. So this is basically the, at the point that I stopped animating um, and I kind of just left it in blocking. So very basic blocking, slightly rough, but it starts to sell the idea as you guys will see next. So yeah, you can see it's like very rough. The cut so far, like the cut from here to here, there's a little bob. So there's a little like stop and then going in. So definitely needed to work on that. When it comes to the animation and the blocking, there's a little bit of more refinement when it comes to the upper body animations and the legs and the contacts with the ball as well. And what I was gonna do next 
was actually making sure that the ball starts to have like more of a linear movement instead of blocked out because all of this is in stepped right now that's why it looks very stuttery um, so to make sure that you start getting certain things out of stepped into linear or spline to make sure that you can start to see the arcs how is the body moving and how are things connecting to each other uh, which is yet another pass of pushing animation forward and making sure that it's as entertaining as possible. So, uh, something that I have to say before I go, um, as a last step, you can see that if I actually kind of go into my nerves curves, um, you can see that the blocking is actually very detailed. So, towards the end, because it's such a fast action when he receives the ball and he's doing the keepy uppy, you need to add more information to your keys to make sure that you get the most out of the animation. So, uh, towards the end, I started to key every single frame to make sure that I could actually start breaking the different limbs into movements, right? So, that stuff, because it happened so fast and I want certain things to go fast and slow, and other things to actually go slow and fast or vice versa you kind of have to kind of start adding keys to every single part of your body to make sure that you actually start getting that overlap of the actions individually when there is less movement so if, it's, if the movement is very slow so for example here he actually kind of goes goes slow into the ball and then fast and then slow again like i mentioned uh, in the previously that stuff needs to actually kind of, uh, can, you can actually add a few more keys in between, two, three, four keys, and that's okay. As soon as it actually goes back into fast, like this movement here, you need to actually add more information to your animation to make sure that you get the most out of it. So that is basically how you get from idea to blocking in Maya the best way possible. So I made a video way back in my first video here in YouTube which was about like God of War, like blocking, it was like something that I did in a couple of days. So go and check it out that video if you haven't so far because it's kind of like the same idea here. But just so you guys know that actually getting an idea and seeing a clip doesn't mean that you have to copy it exactly and put that in your showreel or copy it and plus it and put that in your showreel. You can actually get an idea, flesh it out, add things to it and make it better and make it bigger, make it your own. So that's basically it. Started with Ronaldinho, it ended up being myself with Ronaldinho and then eventually it started to become my own when I started doing the blocking and pushing things to make sure that it's very unique and very different. That's all I had for you guys. Uh, I hope this helps and I hope it kind of sparks a little bit of more creativity in you guys and as always stay well stay safe Peace